Some big news for a division rival that could affect the Sabres' chances next season, and we'll put a bow on the forward group for the Sabres in the 2022 uh, season, and we'll look ahead with Victor Olofsson, Zemgis Gergensens, and a couple of other guys uh, left over here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. <laughs> Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We're brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Jody Biasi, Jordan Hanskin, how are your bets doing? Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, I'm out. I wow. have, uh, yeah, so poorly. So, yeah, so not, not not great. Not great. All the happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have uh, Vasilevsky I over 29 and a half saves. Oh. Those are fun bets. Is it still Those zero? Those are fun bets. Still zero zero. Every every shot is a is is good. Most of them, like every single shot that he saves, yes. Like even the little ones. There's a lot of little Let moments throughout the game where you where you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me know uh, if somebody scores. I have it on my. I have like an update too, but um, I have Panarin first goal. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't think I've, I've seen him make some nice plays, but I haven't seen him score. Uh, all right. Well, let's jump right into what's going on in the Atlantic division. And with one of the Sabres rivals in the Boston Bruins, they have fired their head coach, Bruce Cassidy. It was a big surprise, a big shock to everybody, including Bruins fans, but everybody around the NHL. And we've had reports in the last couple of days since they fired Bruce Cassidy, the athletic reported, for instance, that the team could consider a trade of David Pasternak and that he will not sign an extension with Don Sweeney currently employed as the GM. There's rumors about Patrice Bergeron heading into retirement. There is rumors about, uh, actually this might be confirmed at this point, that Brad Marchand is going to have hip surgery and he's going to miss the first couple of months of the season. So maybe no Marchand, Bergeron, Pasternak seems like a crazy one, though, doesn't he? I mean, if you trade Pasternak, final year of his deal, and I know there's the thing out here about him not signing with the GM uh, still there, but, man, you are going into a full-fledged rebuild, I feel like, if you trade David Pasternak. Yeah, it sounds like they're going to be without their core completely. Um, I doesn't To me, this seemed like... My first reaction was, oh, that's, they're planning for the rebuild, and this is like a mercy firing. Sure. That was kind of what I thought. Is like, okay, thank you for your service. Because, um, I mean, Bruce Cassidy, he's going to find a job. He's a good coach. Like, yeah. I, I, he, there's no doubt that he's going he's gonna to land on his feet. Um, and it's more about the Bruins, right? It just says, like, are they going in a completely different direction? Do they know the writings on the wall? I mean, this is actually, it could be to their credit. Like, we know we can't win with this group, so we're going to – put the hit the reset button on our own terms um and get get all the assets that they can from this group uh but yeah the the Pasternak thing surprises me that he doesn't want sounds like he doesn't want to be there yeah is that he doesn't want to sign with that GM who I don't think the Bruins will fire um so yeah it's Crazy. I would say hate to see it, but I, I don't hate to see it. Like no, we is, don't hate to see it. No, this is great. Like this is as good as it could be for their fans. Their center core, just to give you an idea of what they could be looking like going into next season if Bergeron retires. This is without even Pasternak or Marchand being a part of the equation. And they've got three million dollars in cap space going into the offseason. If Bergeron retires, their center core is Charlie Coyle. Eric Halla, Thomas Nosek, and Curtis Lazar. One, two, three, four down the middle. 
we have a soft spot in our heart for Charlie Coyle for uh, inside joke reasons. Not mm-hmm. a guy you want as your number one center by any means. And what's your thought immediately? Isn't it go to uh, Pittsburgh might lose Malkin and Latang? Washington's getting older. Look at Boston now with a potential rebuild. This is this is starting to take shape as a conference where there's some vulnerable teams that the Sabres could leapfrog. Right. It just seems like finally that the, the tides are turning. Um, you got teams like, I, guess, I mean, the Sabres aren't going to be the only ones that think that they're on the way up, right? I mean, Detroit's probably feeling the same way. Yep. Um, I mean, Ottawa, I don't know what they're feeling. They're probably feeling bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, I mean, there's always there's always teams lurking around waiting for these giants to fall and in hockey which was amazing to me with all the parody of the game how often the same teams are always in the playoffs mm. and i think this though is like the time where you're finally seeing teams age out and boston if right. that's coupled with malcontented players like players that don't want to be there that is yeah Red flags everywhere with that team. It just seems like there's a lot of problems. Yeah. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Well, we'll see what they end up doing. Uh, We know they're at least firing the coach. The favorite to be their next head coach is Nate Lehman, who we once thought about uh, for the Sabre job before Don Granado got it, the head coach of Providence. And when the Mm -hmm. favorite of your – the favorite to be your head coach is a college guy, usually you think of development and youth and – retooling and maybe that is the direction that the Bruins uh, are about to go in. I will say that Barry Trotz is the second name on that list. <laughs> so their head coach hire could say a lot about what their plans are uh, for this off season. So we'll see what direction that's going to be first up uh, for them this off season. Uh, when we come back, we'll dive into the Sabres exit interviews. We are going to wrap up the forward group, starting with Victor Olofsson, who's a very intriguing player for this off season. He is a restricted free agent. He is arbitration eligible, and he's in that sweet spot of a good player while also probably not being a part of the, the critical core of the team. So we'll talk about Olofsson uh, when we come back with uh, some talk about some of the other forwards uh, to come a little bit later on. That's all coming up here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. We are brought to you by athleticgreens.com. Uh, they've got the, the vitamin drops that I use every day that it's it's better than a vitamin supplement for me. They have to take a pill every day, just a little drop right in your water, and you don't even notice it. Right in your coffee, you don't even notice it. And they've got the protein powder for shakes that actually taste really good. They're lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best things, athletic greens that use the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant products, constant product iterations, and third party testing. Athletic greens over 7,000 five-star reviews. And if you go to athleticgreens.com, they're going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. And all you got to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Jody Biasi, Jordan Hanskin back here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Uh, if you want, you ha- we've given you the chance right now. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about our listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcast even better. Opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Locked On. Go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. And it won't take very long. Everyone that completes a survey qualifies for a chance to win a one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey. Victor Olofsson, he is a free agent this offseason for the Buffalo Sabres. He is the next guy we'll focus on in our exit interview series as we finish off the forward group before we head over to the blue line. Victor Olofsson, 26 years old, a restricted free agent, finished the season. He got to 20 goals. As amazing as that might sound, he went like four months without a goal. It was like Halloween through February without one, but he got there. He got to 20 goals, 29 assists for 49 points in 72 games. The advanced numbers came up a little bit higher than they had been in past years. 48% uh, shot rate, 
goals, the expected goals for number just about the same. That's a little bit better than it had been in past years. Not a crazy difference, but uh, a little bit better. So five on five play uh, improved, but the goal total climbed. And we've got a player now, Jordan, that needs a contract. And he, isn't he, he's kind of in that tweener zone of he's not critical to your success, but if you get good, he's a guy you should think would help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that he has a role. Um, he's one of those. He's one of those niche players. Like he's really good at a couple things. Um, and the Sabers are not in a position like I think what we've said with a lot of these guys is we're not in a position where we can just throw away players that are good at stuff. Um, I think we're in a better position than we've been before. But especially like on the wing, we don't have a ton of great wings mm. or Ellie or proven wings. And I think like, I think Olsen, we got, I think we got to bring him back. Um, now the, the thing that gets interesting is his term and his, his payday or the, the, the contract itself is the, the, the interesting part. Um, I think I'm more afraid of term than yeah. giving him money. Like I'm fine with, because the way the Sabres cap issue, we we need to spend, but I don't want to get strapped to like a five six year deal with Victor Olsson right now mm-hmm. when I don't know he's not he has not proven to be reliable. All right. No, he does disappear at times. Uh, the term would be my biggest concern too. I wonder if that'll be where they get into it. What well, they could probably come to terms easily to agree on the money because the Sabres have forty million dollars in cap space. Uh, and you know, $5 million for him. Like there'll be like with no sweat on that. The problem is the Sabres might not want to give him term because four years from now, they might have power to pay Darlene on a new contract. Uh, maybe Samuelson or Yoki Haru. One of them gets a big contract, Jack Quinn, Paterka, like the Thompson, the new core, like there'll be guys to pay by the time Olson's contract would get into like a year four or year five. But at the same time, Olson's 26, you got to think. This is his big contract, right? This is the deal he's going to be looking for. This is the, his. This is the contract of his career potentially. Because if he signs a three-year deal, I mean, twenty-nine, maybe you still get a big contract when you're twenty-nine, but twenty-six, like that's when you should when you should get it. So I've got a team that probably has good reason not to want to give him the term, and I have a player that might feel the pressure to get the term. So I wonder if that's really what the the biggest hiccup is going to be between the two, but. If they compromise and negotiate negotiations go well, are we talking about like a four year deal? That might be easy to stomach on both sides, a four year deal. Yeah, it depends on what we're paying them. Four right? years, five million. Would you do four years, five million per year for Olofsson? Yeah, yeah, that seems fine. I think once you get over to like the once you get to like six million, yeah, you get too into much. a range of like that's a lot. Um now if you yeah. said two years, six mil a year. I could yeah. be. Oh, I would be in for listen! That. If he wants two years, eleven million per year, he's welcome to it because I gotta <laughs> I get to the floor that. anyway. That does set a bizarre precedent, and I it think does. Need to be careful with that one. Yeah, um, it does. But yeah. Uh, right, but that's that's the issue. Is like, yeah, if it, if it's gonna be a one to two year deal, you you maybe reward him for taking the last term with a yeah. lot more money, but. I do think like the the better option though is like I would be okay with like this is how the kind of what like Elks Tuck's contract became like a really good contract, right? Mm-hmm. Um where you give him like a five year deal and it's like three point five mil or something like that. Yeah. Like I could be like that would be great too. Because if perchance Victor Olofsson is more than what he performed with this year, that you get a bargain. Um so it's really up to him what he wants, and like it makes for an interesting negotiation. Um, would yeah. you be surprised if this goes to is he's our this could be arbitration, right? He's arbitration eligible. Yeah. I I don't want to say I expect it to go to arbitration. Um, there's a good sure. chance. There's a very good chance of it. Um, the one I think he'll idea. Win. I think he'll win it. I think he will too. Yeah. The goal scoring production is there. I wonder about the one year deal idea. He's he's not. We had this conversation with Darlene a lot, right? Where it was, do you sign him to the bridge deal now, and 
risk. Well, what was the risk? The risk is he takes the jump he does, which you're fine with. But then instead of having him <laughs> on an eight year deal for eight million per year, now suddenly I've got to pay him 10 plus. Like that's why Darlene would want a shorter deal. Do I have that threat with Olafson? Do I worry about that? Do I not want to give him a one year deal? Because I might think a year from now, I've got to give him six and a half million if he has a big season. Or is he not? Does he not graduate to that level of player where you're thinking about that? Oh, I think though that's like a plus, right? Because in order to like a bridge deal, they have to perform well for the bridge deal to work for them. Sure. So like, well, if you give him the long term deal now, you're taking on the risk that he's not of of almost assuming of you're taking the risk of he'll take the jump. We're going to give him the contract now and get him on a cheaper deal. But you would be betting on him taking the jump without him taking the jump yet. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's pros and cons to both. For Olofsson, I do think it's likely that for the next, like, six years mm-hmm. that he is, like, 49 points a season. Like, yeah. that seems that seems very likely to me. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the question is like, what's the price tag for that? And it's probably around $4 million. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like, I think that's about reasonable. Like, would you be, how mad would you be if they gave all of a sudden a six year contract worth $4 million a year? Ooh, six years. I don't think I would like six years almost on the, <laughs> almost under any circumstance. So he'll I, be 32 when it ends. Yeah. So you're getting his entire prime. I just, I don't think there's much more there than what we've seen. And I think what we've seen is fine, but it's a very specialized player. It's a great shot that can stand and rip him on the power play. And if you put him with scorers in the top six, he'll, he'll score some goals. He'll get you 20 plus goals, but I don't think he's scoring you 40 plus goals. Cause I don't think he's got, he's very reliant on others to create for him. And there's nothing really going on in his own end. And he was, he was better this year. In that regard, but he's still not like a great player. He's not providing value in that way. He's not an elite playmaker. So I've got I've got a shot. He's very specialized. He's Kodalik to me. He's always the player I think of as a comparable. Alesh Kodalik. And do I want to give Alesh Kodaliks six million dollars or six year deals? I think I want to give Alesh Kodaliks three year deals. I could find Alesh Kodaliks, right? Shouldn't shouldn't they think I could find a forty nine point player? I don't want to give that a yeah. six year deal. I, I here's, think, the, here's the counter though, is that that contract becomes very tradable, right? Mm. Like it's like if he's good or if he's like, I don't want to say like if he's good, but not great. If he's been what he's been. want to trade him for somebody great. Like couldn't the Sabres be in a position then you have this Olsen contract and he could become our tuck where yeah. it's like, we'll trade Olsen and these other things for, I don't know name a superstar that becomes available that is now David Pasternak. (laughs) uh, There's no way the Bruins make that deal, right? No, no way. (laughs) Um, But yeah, like like, like a a David Pasternak adjacent player, some, Mm. somebody like that, that you could like trade. Like, I don't know, like maybe one of the, like a Quinn Hughes or something. I don't know. I'm, yeah. just picking, I'm just picking young like a guy that's going to be good like three years from now that maybe hates his team and he's like the new the Jack Eichel that the Sabres could trade for I know this is like this is me going like galaxy brain right now yeah. but I'm just thinking like the possibilities become strong if you maybe give some of that term and the player turns out to be good I think Olsen looked a lot better at the end of the year he was definitely like healthier Mm-hmm. Um, yes wrist so, injury wrist injury in the fall you could definitely hampered him throughout the season yeah so i just think like there's still a chance but it's it's becoming less and less likely and most likely you're right though this is the best it's gonna be yeah um which is a good player that you probably would love like to have but you got to be careful with the contract all right, uh, when we come back, we'll round out the forward group. Zemgus Gergensen's, Cody Eakin, John Hayden, and Anders Bjork will fly through the rest of the names uh, to, to look at for uh, the Sabres up front. That's coming up here on Locked on Sabres. We are brought to you by Built Bar. 
and Built Bar's got caramel brownie now as a flavor. Every time I open this up and they've got a new flavor that sounds amazing. It was cookies and cream, uh, puff last time. Now it's caramel brownie, chewy caramel brownie uh, with caramel swirled on top. So the chocolate covered and then caramel on top. How do you beat that? They're available now at Built.com. You got to act fast because they're a fan favorite. These things do go fast, too. The, the cookies and cream puff I was trying to get my hands on. I got a box originally. I wanted to get a second box. Couldn't do it because I waited too long. So get it now. Forget about dessert. These are better than dessert. Plus, the macros are unreal. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 4 grams of sugar. I would replace a regular brownie with Bill's Caramel Brownie Bar in a heartbeat. Go to Bilt.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your order. Use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Bilt.com. Jody Biasi, Jordan Hanskin here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. All right, let's fly through some of the guys that are kind of afterthoughts in the forward group. Don't really mean much uh, to the, the way forward, but they're on the list. So let, let's get through them. Uh, playing like keeper, keeper cut. Keeper cut. Uh, Cody Eakin. Cut. Is that not one of the worst tenures you've ever seen for a Sabre in your life? Holy cow, think, he's bad. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't great. Two um, great moments. I've got two great moments for you for Cody Eakin. One, when he held up Rick Jenneret on the ice for the picture at, at RJ Knight. Not was, in the game. He was tasked with that responsibility. <laughs> and two, when he mocked Jack Eichel in the faceoff against the Golden Knights with the uh, rolling the, the neck around. Those that are the is, two the two best Cody Eakin moments as Buffalo Sabres. I'm trying to think of – I think what I'll always remember Cody Eakin for is three-on-three three over time. And oh, my God. And off and going to the bench. Can't that is the funniest – that is my, that is like, I still think that's the funniest thing is that that is what Cody Eakin is, is he'll win this draw and not do anything else. And he's got a mullet. <laughs> yeah. No the, the, the haircut was something too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not, not, a, not a great saber tenure. Um, he did not get a hive like, to, like the great Toby reader or no. Rosa. he did not get a, he did not get a fan club. So neither of us think he'll be back. Who do we think replaces him as like that fourth line center, maybe even slash face off spe- face off specialist? Do we think that's a guy in house or do they go out outside for that? I think it's probably outside for that. I don't think they have a, a natural fit. I've wondered. You're about thinking Asplund. like Asplund would not. Well, he was not a face off. He's not a face off specialist, though. No, but he, he could be like the fourth line center. Sure. He could. Um, do, do we need do you care about face off specialists? I don't. I like, listen. I feel like analytically that is like not a thing. No, like the difference between the best guys and the and the middle of the road guys is not that much. You know, like Eakin, I'll, I'll look it up. How many more faceoffs per 100 does Cody Eakin win over Dylan Cousins? Well, I what? bet the best guys are what, like 55, 60%? About 55. Yeah, that's about right. And then the worst guys are what, like 41? So the best yeah. guys win six of 10. And the sure. worst guys win loop four of ten. So it's like um, what, what the, the the difference is so small. Yeah. So Eakin Eakin won fifty six percent of his draws last year. That was first on the team. Second on the team was Zemgus Gergensen's forty nine point eight percent. Sure. Let let him do it. It doesn't like it. Literally doesn't matter. Seven right. more draws per one hundred, and he's out there in three on three overtime. Not that Gergensen is the guy I'm trying to rush out there either. Uh, it's funny. The, the three guys all in the same line were the three best faceoff specialists. Eakin, 56%. Gergensen's 49.8%. Okposo, 49.7%. Who uh, never plays center. Like. Never plays center. Takes a lot of draws, though. Not, he took 100. He probably takes a lot of penalty kill draws, right? Yeah, he. it depends on which side of the ice. 185 draws. That's a lot for him. Um mm. Well, that's a natural that's a natural segue to Gergensen's final year of his contract, two point two million dollars. Is is he a fourth line center to you? I mean, could he he hasn't done it in a while, but I he's versatile, right? He should be able to I, fill that I role. like him. Like I, I think he is a good fourth line. That's mm-hmm. that's about right for him. Like I think his contract's fine. Um there's not really I I, I would be fine with keeping him around. After his contract, I know that there you could probably do better, um, but I don't know. I think he's like I think Gergensen's is one of those guys that you'll really notice if the Sabers are in a playoff series. Okay, he's that's only, my theory on him. He's only twenty eight years old, by the way. He's been he's, on the team since he was eighteen. 
He's he he played <laughs> he played on this team with Ryan Miller. Yeah. He played with I'm looking at the original team that he played on the Sabres with. Drew Stafford, Thomas mm-hmm. Vanek. He played with yep. Thomas Henrik Talinder. That's the one. Dominic Gertz has played with Henrik Talinder. That was second stint Talinder, I think. Um, but he's been here a very long time. Uh, Ten goals last year in 56 games. That's a 15 goal pace, by the way. Nice little offensive season. They kind of went unnoticed by uh, Gergensen's playing on the fourth line. Uh, yeah, I like him too. 2.2 million, fine. It, it's not that bad. Fourth line, versatility, penalty kill, and speed. You've got speed in the bottom six uh, with Zemga. So he's the only. He's just been around a while. It's the only reason you might not like him. There's nothing really wrong with him as a fourth line guy at all. Uh, okay, so that's Gergensen's. Uh, as any chance John Hayden is back? We're thinking that's zero. If that happens, something went wrong. Something is going horribly wrong. Yeah, I don't. I oh, there was nothing there. Just absolutely. He, I mean, he there. could be a he could be a Rochester guy. Yeah. He played how many games for this team? Fifty five games, two goals and two assists. I mean, that's like John Scott production. That doesn't happen in the league anymore. You don't get four points in fifty five games anymore. Um, but John Hayden did. God damn it, John Hayden did. He had fewer points than Drake Kajula, who played eighteen games. And he's not great. He's Drake Kajula. By the way, I didn't have him on this list. Should, I, should we mention him? What's Con. higher or lower chance? Drake Kajula or uh, or John Hayden to be back? Hayden probably. He can okay. Play more games. And then the final guy to uh, to mention here, who is under contract for next season, is Anders Bjork, part of the Taylor Hall trade, one point six million dollars in his age twenty five year old season. Uh, he finished the season with five goals and three assists. In 58 games played, uh, 12 minutes a night. I I don't know. Isn't he just kind of fit for that 13th forward, healthy scratch guy that plays when someone's injured? Yeah. Um, I thought he was the most disappointing player on the team. To be honest, mm-hmm. um, I actually like was interested yeah. by him when at the end of last year, and like I just felt he got he didn't he didn't really do much to improve or anything. And like, he's not like super old. Like he still had the ability to get better. And for some reason he Stop. was the guy that, and a team where um, we had improvements all over the place. We did not happen. get it from Anders Bjork, which no. was surprising to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, let him run his contract out, be the fringe guy. Yeah. Like I, I don't see any problem with him being, there um he also could i could easily see him getting i assume he's on a one-way deal that he could get he could get sent down and waved yeah yeah he if, if they need a spot on the roster for uh quinn or paterka right uh yeah and, and they like want to keep Hinestroza too um yeah waving him is maybe a very very realistic outcome uh and you're right like there was a little bit of hope after he was traded to the Sabres because he had six points in 15 games. He scored he eight... before Taylor Hall. He scored before Taylor Hall. That's right. Um, but you're right. There was just, there was nothing there, nothing there last season. Mm-hmm. All right. That's going to do it for us here on lockdown Sabres. That's it for the forwards. We'll talk uh, some about the defensemen and the goaltenders uh, coming up, but also uh, June 9th. I mean, we're getting closer to free agency, closer to the draft and we'll start diving in on off season stuff in terms of what the Sabres will do to improve the team and also uh, what they'll do in the draft. So that's coming up uh, in the next couple of days and weeks here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks everybody for listening. I'm on Twitter at Sneaky Joe Sports. Be sure to shoot Jordan a follow uh, at JR Hanskin. And thanks for making us your first listen every day. And we'll talk to you next time here on Locked On Sabres.